And uh, in that story, two women who claim to be the mother of the same baby go to the king, and the king's solution is to cut the baby in half. Uh, one mother says uh, or, or, uh, that uh, she's okay with it, that everyone will get a half, and basically no, no one will get a baby. Right. Uh, or And the other one says, no, give it to the other one, just don't kill the baby. And then King Solomon says, oh, she must be the real mother and gives her the baby. I think this is a very similar situation. Unfortunately, the bank doesn't seem to know its Jewish uh, uh, culture and history very well. Because uh, we have a situation here where the, the baby is Jewish life in Germany. The question is, can Jews live in Germany safe and free and have their own political opinions and, and their own choice what political opinions to hold? Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Mark Steiner. Twice since the Nazis ruled Germany, a German bank has closed the account of a Jewish organization. It happened in 2016. Same bank, same Jewish organization once again. The bank is called the Bank for Social Economy, which operates accounts for many civil society organizations and is considered a progressive banking institution. Nonetheless, it closed the account of Jewish Voice for Just Peace in the Middle East. Jewish Voice is, as it's known, is a German organization promoting solidarity with Palestinian rights. We covered this here at The Real News before, describing how as part of a worldwide campaign to demand that the Bank for Social Economy refrain from discrimination against its Jewish customers. The bank ceded, and the bank reopened the account. This year, things heated up again. The bank then commissioned an external expert to investigate whether the Jewish Voice is an anti-Semitic group although eventually the expert refused to conduct such an investigation. Then Jewish Voice proceeded to win the Gottingham Prize. Shortly afterwards, the bank posed an ultimatum to them. Renounce BDS or we'll close your account. And we're joined now by a board member of Jewish Voice who also happens to be a correspondent for The Real News to discuss why Jewish Voice refused to engage in an investigation, whether they are anti-Semitic or not, or why they refuse to renounce BDS. Sher Hever is a board member of the Jewish Voice for Just Peace in the Middle East, and a correspondent for The Real News, uh, a network that being in Heidelberg, Germany. His most recent book is Privatization of Israeli Security. And welcome back, Shir. It's always good to talk to you. Thank you, Mark, for having me. This is a really complex subject in some ways. So take us, I mean, so, so what happened in the intervening time? Um, I, I read the statement from the bank, and I'll tell you, give you my thoughts about that in a minute, but tell me what, 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 what happened here. Well, the, the bank conducted a negotiating process with us, uh, with the Jewish Voice for Just Peace in the Middle East. Were you and, part of that? Uh, hmm? Were you part of that, the negotiations? Uh, no, okay. no. Uh -huh. uh, other members of the board uh -huh. participated in the negotiation uh, process. Uh, and basically, uh, we, we were quite optimistic about this negotiating pro uh, process. We came with a very positive outlook to it, and we thought the bank is actually uh, willing to, to apologize for blaming us of, of anti-Semitism and arranging this investigation against us. Uh, the bank was uh, also understandably under a lot of uh, international pressure and also pressure inside Germany uh, to close our account because uh, it was uh, generally understood that if a Jewish organization loses its account uh, for supporting the BDS movement, then every organization in Germany will have to, uh, all, the, all the other organizations, uh, will have to announce that they reject BDS, otherwise their accounts will be closed as well, uh, in a very McCarthyist way. Uh, so it was very important for us in that context uh, to tell the bank that we uh, want to keep our account with them uh, as a symbolic issue, and that we want to uh, ensure that our existence in this bank is proof of the freedom of speech in Germany. Uh, but at some point, the bank just told us either you publish a statement or sign a statement that we will write for you uh, where you distance yourself from the BDS movement and uh, basically say that you reject it uh, or we will close your account. And of course, we will not accept um, so, this kind of, of thought control or political control. There is, a, a, according to the German constitution, the right to free speech and free, free political expression is protected uh, and the bank doesn't seem to understand that uh, and they just, just told us, that they're going to close their account. Well, let me, let me raise, when I read the bank statement, um, and I was kind of, kind of thinking about where this would live, I mean, this seems to me it's a very complex issue. On the one hand, you've got a bank like uh, that refuses to take the Jewish voice account uh, in a country that is overly sensitive about things Jewish because of the Holocaust and what happened in World War II and before. 
Uh, on the other hand, you have all, it seems from what I've been reading, you have all these right-wing Zionist organizations that were pushing to insist that your account be withdrawn and that you were, in fact, uh, even though you're Jewish, you're anti-Semitic. Um, or some people like to say self-hating Jews. <laughs> But so, so, so let's talk about that, about the, those, those two kind of contradictions and realities that exist and how they played into all this and, and, and uh, your analysis of that. I think the best analysis is to use a biblical story. And okay. I'm sure you know it, but maybe not all of our viewers know it, uh, the judgment of King Solomon, yes, uh, which is in the Bible. Uh, and uh, in that story, two women who claim to be the mother of the same baby go to the king and the king's solution is to cut the baby in half uh, one mother says uh, or, or, uh, that uh, she's okay with it, that everyone will get a half and basically no, no one will get a baby. Right. Uh, or And the other one says, no, give it to the other one, just don't kill the baby. And then King Solomon says, oh, she must be the real mother and gives her the baby. I think this is a very similar situation. Unfortunately, the bank doesn't seem to know its Jewish uh, uh, culture and history very well because <laughs> uh, we have a situation here where the, the baby is Jewish life in Germany. The question is, can Jews live in Germany safe and free and have their own political opinions and, and their own choice what political opinions to hold? Uh, and in this bank, there used to be another organization, another Jewish organization called Keren Hayesod, which is a pro-Israeli uh, organization. Actually, Keren Hayesod is registered in Israel. Uh, it's a Zionist organization. It funnels money to illegal colonies in the West Bank. Uh, it, uh, it buys land which only Jews can live on. So it's a very right-wing racist organization. And we never, at the Jewish Voice for Just Peace, called the bank to close their account. We believe that even if this organization is racist, um, they are entitled to their opinion. We'll fight their opinion, but we're not going to silence them. We're going to uh, make sure that uh, um, our opinion is also heard. So in that sense, uh, we are willing to have Jewish life in Germany where everyone will get an opinion. The bank, however, uh, and, and now, now what happened is actually that Kerenai Esod they said, if the bank doesn't kick out us, they will leave the bank. And they have more money than you. Hmm? They also have oh, more they, money than they you. They have a lot more money than us. <laughs> right. They're supported by the Israeli government, right. so they have a, a lot more money. Uh, but, um, but anyway, they, when the bank in uh, last year reopened our account, they left in protest and said, we're closing our account with this bank. Now, see what's going to happen to this bank, because they are kicking us out. After we get kicked out, what happens if Kerna Yesod says, oh, we want our account back in the Bank of Social Economy? If the Bank of Social Economy says, no, we are not a place for having political debates like, like they do in their statement, we're, we're not the right place for having political discussions among Jewish groups, then basically they're saying political Jewish groups may not have accounts in the bank, which is a totally racist statement. Their other option is to say, yes, we are willing to have Kerna Yesod, the right wing a organization open the account, but not the Jewish Voice for Just Peace. So that means the bank says, yes, we're pro-occupation, pro-racism, pro-right-wing Jews, but we are against Jews who stand up for human rights. And so this means that this is not really a bank so much, but more of a political organization, which again, the bank in their statements say, we're not a political organization. So, they, so make up your mind. Either you're a political organization uh, or you are an organization that doesn't so allow Jews be uh, customers. What do you think really pushed, uh, forced this decision to happen? I mean, from what I've read about this bank, the Bank of Social Economy, I mean, I called it in, in the opening kind of a progressive institution as banking banks go. I mean, if you, this was here in the United States, it would be considered a progressive bank, it takes all these civ civic groups who takes their money and, you know, it, 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 and seems to back a number of those kind of progressive causes inside of Germany itself. Um, so what happened? What, what, do you, what do you think is really at work here? What is work here? What is at work here is that the Israeli lobby is working extremely hard in Germany uh, to try to make BDS uh, illegitimate and even to criminalize it, and they're willing to use every last card that they have, uh, uh, drawing on the Holocaust feeling, uh, the, the guilt feelings of Germans over the Holocaust. Yeah. Although this is really not the issue so much for for these right wing Germans who are pro Israeli. Uh, and uh, are, they have pushed this decision at the uh, German parliament. They are using organizations in Germany that are pretending to be organizations that represent all Jews in Germany, but of course 
uh, Jews are a very varied group and they have many different opinions and no one organization can represent them. Always. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> always, I said. Always, yes. yeah, yeah, absolutely. of course, <laughs> right. of course. Uh, right. and, uh, and so these are the, the organizations that claim again and again BDS is anti-Semitic. And that's, of course, a lie. But our organization, a Jewish Voice for Just Peace, many of our members support BDS. That's a big problem for them because it proves that BDS is not anti-Semitic. And we keep publishing uh, information about uh, the rights of Palestinians and the uh, international law and uh, how German policy towards Israel is riddled with internal contradictions uh, because it's blindly supporting Israel and still claiming to be supporting international law and the opinions of the, of the European Union. And that just doesn't go together. Uh, and, I, and, and that's why these organizations are very much focused on taking down the Jewish voice for just peace. That's a, a, a very problematic target for them. And the fact that we won the Göttingen uh, Peace Prize uh, this year is something that on the one hand shows just how widespread is the support, uh, the grassroots support for our organization in Germany, but also uh, it's, uh, it's uh, really uh, um, like a, a call to arms for the right-wing pro-Israeli organizations that now have to redouble their efforts and redouble their funding right. to try uh, to discriminate, uh, to, to delegitimize our, our organization. So a little a bit of time we have left here, just two very quick questions. A, how divided is the Jewish community, which is a minuscule community compared, community compared to what it was in the 20s and 30s, obviously, but, but how divided are they on this issue? Like it's increasingly divided here in the United States. And B, what are the next steps? Um, I think in Germany, what you don't really have so much as, as you do in the United States is a very large and old, well-entrenched Jewish community that doesn't concern itself every day with matters of Israel-Palestine, uh, that are more inter interested in Jewish life for itself. Uh, what you do have in Germany is a generation of uh, Jews that came mainly from the Soviet Union. And they are somewhat of an older generation here, mm. uh, and they tend to be more conservative. Mm -hmm. On, of course, their political opinions are just as varied as any other group. But this is the, the uh, main support base for the organization called the Central Committee of the Jews, which is a right-wing pro-Israeli organization. Uh, and their chairman, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Josef Schuster, uh, is, is constantly attacking our organization and calling us anti-Semites. But then you have a new generation of German Jews, many of them coming from Israel, many of them knowing firsthand what the occupation looks like and what apartheid looks as like. As yourself. As, a, as myself, yes. Right. Uh, and there are tens of thousands, uh, like myself, who came from, from Israel to Germany. Because Germany is considered a liberal and democratic country where people can express their opinion, only that we come to this country to find out that, yes, it is a liberal and democratic country on any topic except Israel. And that issue, uh, German uh, politics is still very backwards, unfortunately. But, but among this group of, of uh, uh, Jewish uh, immigrants to Germany, uh, the, so the, the opinion is much more to the left. Again, of course, it's a very varied group. There are right, also pro-Israelis right. among the group, but they're a small minority. And a very large proportion of this group uh, supports the BDS movement. So very quickly, because we do have to end this, so what's your next steps? Well, we're considering to appeal to, uh, uh, to the court and to uh, file a lawsuit against the bank uh, because according to the German Constitution, Article 5 of the German Constitution uh, enshrines the right for free speech and freedom of organization. Uh, and interestingly, there's another article of the German Constitution, Article 18, which has never been actually used before. Uh, but this article says that an organization that abuses their freedom of speech and freedom of organization in order to take away the rights of other organizations to express themselves freely, will lose those rights. And I think uh, that the Bank of Social Economy did not do their homework and did not properly research before they took this very rash de decision. And the fact that they've taken a political uh, position uh, as a bank is something that, that puts their very existence at risk. Well, sure, Hever, it's always a great uh, pleasure to talk with you. Thank you so much for this report, and we look forward to obviously talking to you again very soon. Thank you very much, Mike. Thank you. And I'm Mark Steiner here for the Real News Network. Thank you all for joining us. Take care.